Hola, bienvenidos un día más a Artéticos en el Paz Madrid. Hoy tenemos, como otras veces, un invitado especial y la charla también va a ser especial porque va a ser en inglés. Eh, tenemos a Susan Gerwig. Eh, ahora pasaremos a inglés, pero por terminar la presentación, eh, ella es la líder de un movimiento que lleva ya cinco años eh, uniendo a colaboradores de Wikipedia de todo el mundo para mejorar la Wikipedia y hacer que el contenido sea, digamos, más afín al movimiento científico y al escepticismo científico. Eh, ahora pasamos a la inglés. Hello, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome here again to Skeptics in the Bad Madrid. Uh, we have uh, another special guest today. Uh, we are still celebrating our 30th anniversary of our association, and we have here today Susan Gerby. Uh, welcome, Susan. She, is, uh, she defines herself as a very, very average person, but uh, since five years ago, she's having a huge, huge impact uh, worldwide with a project that we, she will describe the, the project to us. And he's, let's say, helping a lot of uh, Wikipedia editor, editors make a bigger impact on, on Wikipedia. So, welcome, Susan. Thank you very much. So let's get started. So how many here did a March for Science? Did you guys participate at all? Did, did uh, Madrid have a March for Science? How many people showed up, you think? A thousand, a hundred, something like that. Okay, so in America, which is where I'm from, if you catch the accent, we had to do, uh, we were feeling that science wasn't supported because of the politics, the, the politicians that just so happen to be in charge in America right now. So science, we felt, was under attack. So we started organizing this thing called March for Science. And it was a lot of fun. We went out, we protested, we supported science, we wore funny shirts, we had great funny signs. It was a lot of fun to do this March for Science. We went out with an agenda of just feeling like promoting science, letting people know that science is awesome, science is fun. But what happened is, we came out in mass. All over the world, people came out. And this is a picture I took at my, my, uh, my event, which was in Monterey. I run Monterey County Skeptics. And you're all welcome to come and hang out with us. The next time you're in California, come, make sure you come hang out with us. So this is the March for Science picture that I took that I thought represents our march. And if you look at this photo, you can see that we had the youth there. And look at this guy with his unmatched socks and how fun that is. And he's wearing his pink hat. And he is so excited. Yay, science, science, I love science. This is so much fun, I'm protesting. This is great, I want to do this for a living. He's just having a great time. And then you can see she's so excited and she's so excited. And, and the woodpeckers came out. They speak for the woodpeckers. Anybody else come out as a woodpecker? No. Oh, okay. Woodpecker. So, yeah, it's a, it's a bird. And this guy, he's a little sad because he didn't want to be a woodpecker. But anyway, so this is our March for Science. It was great, it was a lot of fun. But what happened is, once it was over, then what? Nothing happened. We didn't see any agenda changes, we didn't see any great movements, we didn't see anybody come up with any kind of activism. The best I have seen, and I have done this lecture probably 18 times, the best I have seen is people say, we're gonna do something else. Let's start planning the March for Science next year. Okay, well, that's great, but you're not doing anything much now. So what are you doing for the rest of the 364 days? So I'm here in Madrid to offer you something you can do. So I'm here to recruit you. So just keep that in mind as I go through. Let's see how good of a job I do to recruit you. Oops. All right, so I am Susan Gerbic. I am the leader and founder of the Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia project, and we, we're better known as GSOW, or GSO. So if I say that, that's what I meant. We are trying very, very hard. We're an editing team. We're trying to improve, create, uh, have the backs of, support Wikipedia pages concerned with science, scientific skepticism, and the paranormal. We work on pages on alternative medicine, our science, science, history, 
Um, everything that we you can imagine with that. We are trying to recruit and train and motivate and mentor science-minded people into doing more with the limited amount of time that you have. We find that lots of people are on Facebook and Twitter and who knows where else, arguing with people. I mean, how many of you guys are sitting there arguing with people on, on these social media sites? There you go. It doesn't make you feel good. You go to bed angry. If you finally get to bed, you're kind of pissed off because you're putting up links. You're making the best arguments. Science is on your side. But they're not reading your posts. They're not reading the things you're putting up. You're, you're in my opinion, you're wasting your time. Yeah. You're better off taking that amount of time that you have and actually putting it in a place where somebody's going to read it, somebody who is maybe not a total believer, but is somebody who's willing to change their mind and willing to think about what you're writing. And that place is Wikipedia. We find that the people who work for me who are able to get off of the social media and the arguing and all that kind of stuff, they're probably having better, healthier lives because they're not so frustrated, they're getting a better night's sleep, they're able to stop fighting with people and uh, actually make a difference. Oh, I got to tell how. Yeah, just keep reminding me. Okay, yeah. I did. So we're an, uh, a Wikipedia editing team that does this. So um, let me hit this button here. So we're all friends, right? We need to just... So, I'm going to give you a few examples. This first example I'm going to give you is a, a Wikipedia page that we just recently rewrote, maybe in two or three days ago. All the examples I'm going to give you, you don't need to know who these people are. So there's no test or anything like that. This is a person that I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name. It's written in Polish. It's a Polish name. But this just came to our purview just a few days ago. One of my editors, Adam, who was at the time my only Polish editor, he rewrote this Wikipedia page. It's a quack. It's a person who believes vitamin C cures cancer. He's, uh, his, he's a, a supporter of uh, Andrew Wakefield, the, and he believes that autism causes vaccines. And this guy sells nutritional products, and on and on and on. And from what I understand, I think he's about to go to court for some... Um, things he's done. And uh, the Wikipedia page was in really bad shape. So my Polish editor came in and he spent a week rewriting this Wikipedia page. It was excruciating. He said that the everything had to be rewritten on it. It was just nonsense after nonsense on the page. And he said that he had to even really protect his, his uh, Wikipedia password. So he had to change his password a couple times because the people who support this guy, he's like a guru in, in Poland, he's like a big deal. This guy's fans, his, his supporters, are, will go after you. They will, they will uh, attack you if they find out who you are. So he, my editor was being very careful. So he rewrote this Wikipedia page. I'll get to that little thing. And um, as I said, it took a little over a week for him to do that, and it's been up a few days. And in two days, it received 53,000 page views in Polish. So this person you guys have never heard of, and I've never heard of him, is obviously attracting attention. 53,000 page views in a Polish Wikipedia page is a lot of page views. So that was what was happening just a couple days ago, so I wanted to point that out. All right, so the goals of my project, the GSOW project, are probably a little optimistic. They're probably fanciful because we have thousands of pages that need to be worked on. Thousands and thousands. And right now, I think I've just added it last night to new Italian editors, thank you. So I think I'm up to 106 editors on uh, my project. We are working on a place that's unusual that for a, a team. What we're doing is we're working on a, on a Facebook group. Our Facebook group is a secret Facebook group. You can't just join it, we have to put you in it. Um, there's no requirements other than wanting to contribute to the project. It's called the Secret Cabal. We call it that because that's what the paranormal community has called uh, our project, saying that we're trying to control Wikipedia, we're trying to um, control information, we're trying to do these awful things, we have a cabal. So we just went with it, and yes, we're using the name of the Secret Cabal. So cabal, I don't know if you know, is, that, is it kind of the same word in Spanish as it is in English? Oh, oh. Okay, yeah. So that's what we are. So we're running this all out of uh, Facebook. So what we do that makes this a little bit different from the average Wikipedia editor is that we do our own training. We constantly are motivating each other. 
We're getting constant feedback and constantly training and training and training. You're never done training with my project. You're always learning from each other. And we're all pretty much friends because we're all on Facebook talking and sharing stories and pictures of our cats and things like that. So now I'm going to get into a couple other aspects that are kind of fun. So again, here's another project uh, page. You probably know what this is, but it just out of curiosity, how many people here know what the Brzezinski Clinic is? No, okay. So this has been, this is a cancer quack, and he lives in Texas, he's from Poland. And what uh, the Brzezinski Clinic does is it's, he's been around for about 40 years, and we have been trying to get him shut down using the law and other tactics that are kind of fun. But one of the things is, is this guy believes that he's curing cancer, he's not. He says he's um, able to cure serious stage four cases that where a person is told, you know, just take your child home and, and they're going to die. He says, oh, no, we have like a 70% rate of being able to cure that cancer. The other problem is, is that he's taking serious amounts of money from these family members. And they're coming from all over the world to his clinic in Texas. And that's in the United States. So we did not write the Brzezinski Clinic page, my project, but we have been maintaining it and make sure it's up to good shape. We found that the Brzezinski Clinic um, is attracting, since we, well, it receives about 300 page views a day. So that's a lot of page views. But we felt that this was way too important because this, this page is actually being accessed by people all over the world who are desperate looking for some sort of a uh, way of curing their cancer. He's not doing it and he's taking all your money as he can to do it. And then also these people are forced to go to Texas and die there, away from their family and their friends and their pet and their favorite bed and all those things that are important to you when you're traveling, as I will know. So we rewrote the Wikipedia page not only in English, we decided we would translate it into other languages. We wrote it in German. We wrote it in Dutch. We wrote it in Portuguese. And we went and wrote it into Italian. So I'm going to show you a slide. Who can name this person? Who is it? Yeah. Oh, I got it. Oh, you guys aren't psychic. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, it says it over here. Anybody know who he is? <laughs> Fabio. Fabio. Who got it? Fabio in the back. All right. Back row. Good job. So Fabio was a, a romance novelist. Of uh, He was on every romance novel cover, book cover you can imagine. He was quite famous in America and Italy and all over the world, actually. And he did a commercial for uh, a, a butter product. It was called, I can't believe it's not butter. And I don't have a good Italian accent. But anyway, he's quite famous. He doesn't look like that anymore. He's probably 70 now. But um, he still dresses like that. It's really kind of funny. Anyway, so Fabio is a huge supporter of the Brzezinski Clinic. He sent his sister there who had stage four cancer and she died. Um, not because of his treatment, but because she was seriously ill. I mean, she was weeks away from dying herself. So, but we don't know what Fabio's gonna do. He might just do commercials and Italian is supporting this. We don't know what he might do. He might go on tour and start lecturing how wonderful Brzezinski Clinic is. But we were ready. We've created a Wikipedia page for, for the Brzezinski Clinic in Italian because it's super important that people get information in the languages that they read written in a way that they can understand it, not super academic, but written in a way that they can find out their information for themselves. I don't believe people are stupid. I believe people are just ill-informed. They need good information. And we have to put it in a place where they're gonna find it written in a language they wanna read. So we wrote it in Italian. We translated it into Italian. Then we translated it into Polish. So now all the other pages that I've mentioned, they're getting like three or 4,000 page views a year, not very many. But the Polish page has already had almost 30,000 page views in less than a year because Brzezinski's Polish. So we had to make sure that this page was written in Polish. And it is, and it's ready and waiting in case somebody needs information. Those 30,000 page views are not skeptics. These are desperate family members who are probably seeking out trying to find a cure, and they're in the worst situation possible. And then there's these grieving 
people who are being completely taken advantage of by somebody as horrible as a, a, a cancer quack. I'm sorry, I have no sympathy for those kinds of people. So this one is uh, another thing that I want to explain. In my other life, as a skeptic, I'm actively, passionately about psychics. That is my thing. I am almost an expert in psychics. I have um, so much years of working with activism concerning psychics. And a lot of people would be really shocked to find out that I, I read a Wikipedia editing team. So again, this person is not important for you to know who he is. He's the latest psychic of the day in America. And yes, psychics are a problem in America. So we're having problems with uh, the flavor of the day, psychic of the day. We call them fuzzy sweater, fuzzy sweater psychics. These are the people next door who would walk your dog, who would house sit for you, bag your groceries. Those so nice people. They're just the sweetest people. They would never lie to you about talking to your dead person. They're just so nice. Well, this is the sweat, fuzzy sweater skeptic, uh, psychic. So this is the new phenomenon. We're, we're done with the old days of like uh, Sylvia Brown. I don't know if you remember Sylvia Brown and she was so rude to people and everybody thought she must be real because she's so rude. So this guy's been around just a little over a year and a half. Here he is with one of my favorite people. I'm sure he's one of your favorite people, Dr. Phil, who's been the bane of um, uh, this, the skeptic world for so long by supporting all these people. So he's, he was taken just literally off of a, um, Tyler Henry was taken pretty much just out of a psychic shop somewhere and given a TV show, a reality TV show, believe it or not. All right, so I write articles about him. I write them and I publish them in Skeptical Inquired, which is a journal. I personally have a Wikipedia page. There is a Susan Gerbic Wikipedia page. So I'm about to talk to, about myself in the third person. Because Susan Gerbic has a Wikipedia page, and because Susan Gerbic is writing notable criticism about somebody that I have an expertise in, then that means that the articles I write can be used on Wikipedia pages. Do you follow me? So what happens is I'm able to write about Tyler Henry. I think I've written eight or nine articles about him that explain what he's doing and I'm and you can find out about that if you're interested. You can look on this Susan Gerbic page. It's one way of finding out. So these are Tyler Henry's stats. Okay, we're all skeptics here. Skeptics like numbers, so let me show you some numbers. This is really fun. So I don't know how well you guys in the back can see, but these are these are page view stats. This is for a year and a half that Tyler Henry had been um, in the the eye of uh, of America. People are going, who's Tyler Henry? They see him on these TV shows, and there's they're, they're, he's Dr. Phil and all these things. They're going, who's this guy? So what happens is they Google him, or whatever search engine you use, and then once you've done that, what happens? They're going to get his Wikipedia page, which we didn't write. Somebody else wrote. And they're trying to find out who this person is, too. So here's the stats. You can see this is 14,000 page views in one day and so on. These are all these stats. This is season one, when the show is being promoted. Here's season two. Can you believe it? You got a second season. And here's season three, where they're starting to produce, they're starting to hype it. So it hasn't happened yet, but this is when they're starting to show commercials and things. So you can see that this guy is getting a lot of page views. When I produced this slide, he had already had 849,490 page views. That's a lot of page views. But if he can talk to the dead, he would be the most powerful person on earth. And 849,000 page views would be nothing over a year and a half's time. That'd be minute, hour page views. These people can't really talk to the dead. I have to make sure you guys understand that, right? <laughs> you guys got that, right? It's an act. I can show you how it's done if you're really curious. So as the most notable critic of Tyler Henry, the Susan Gerbic Wikipedia page gets stat views too. Now I'm really not, as I was saying, I'm a really just a normal person. I shouldn't be getting page views. I speak to skeptic groups. I'm active in the skeptic community. And if a skeptic Googles me, you know, maybe four of you a day or something like that, I don't know, I shouldn't get very many page views. But because I am the most notable critic of the psychic on his Wikipedia page, 
I have a lot of page views. And so we did this in kind of a way to be able to see how things are, you know, are people going to the Wikipedia page and then going to the criticism? We wanted to kind of see how that worked. So you can see, here's the page view stats for Susan Gerbic, season one. This is whenever I didn't have a lot of articles out about Tyler Henry, so I wasn't getting his, um, it didn't show up on his Wikipedia page as much because there wasn't very many page uh, articles out at the beginning. And then you can see here's season two. And then here's season three, those two spikes I said, showed you. Now I'm gonna put those together so it's a little more obvious what's going on here. Oops, wrong direction. Can you guys see that okay? Mm -hmm. Do you see what I see? It's obvious that people are going to the Tyler Henry Wikipedia page and then they're clicking onto the Wikipedia page for the Susan Gerbic to see who this critic is who's, who's talking about him. You can see these are exactly the same kind of uh, how it's trending. You know, here, look at that spike, look at that spike, look at that spike, look at that spike. You can see it's, it's a correlation, obviously. I do want to point out that these are thousands of page views for Tyler Henry, and these are hundreds of page views for So they're not going one for one. Not everybody who's clicking on the Tyler Henry page is also going to the critic page. But it is as much as we can do. It's the activism that we can do that's making this possible. Does anybody notice anything odd about the Susan Gerbic stats? Do you see the dips? Dips? Okay. There's a dip right here. It does not correlate with this Tyler Henry stats. He's still receiving the same stats. There's another dip right here. It doesn't correspond with that. Why? You went down. Hmm? You went down. I went down. Why? Attacks. Attacks. She's got it. Did someone erase what you had written? Yes. Very good. She really is paying attention. Good job. Mm -hmm. I'll give you two stickers. <laughs> so she said exactly right. What's happened is somebody removed the criticism from the Tyler Henry page. So they just kind of wiped it out off the Wikipedia page. And that's what, as soon as it was noticed, it was put back in because it's legitimate criticism from a notable person who is an expert on psychics. So it needs to be on the page. There's no reason why it should be off. So as soon as it was noticed, it was put back on. But this would be normal stat views for Susan Gerbic. This is, this is normal. But because these are causing the trend because of the, um, the notability of Tyler Henry. But that's exactly right. So if there's no criticism on a Wikipedia page, nobody's reading criticism of the, of the person at all. So this is telling us that we need to make sure at least we have some kind of criticism for the 200 or 100 people a day who are viewing that criticism. Okay, so I have one more story. Maybe two, but not many more. Okay, what's wrong direction? Again, this is something that you don't need to know exactly what it is, but how many people have heard of cupping? <laughs> All right, okay, so cupping is a, yeah, it's, it's the, it's like creating hickeys, perfect hickeys on bodies, and it's supposed to, you take a cup and you heat it up, you make it hot and you stick it on the body and it's supposed to bring up your blood flow and it's supposed to do some amazing things to you. It's a placebo. It's not doing anything except causing you hickeys. And then you go on Instagram, these celebrities, it's a new thing in Hollywood. You go on Instagram, you wear a backless thing, you show all your hickeys and people go, oh wow, you are so trendy. In other words, you have more money than you have brains. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I said that on camera. <laughs> um, anyway, so what happens is, do you guys remember the Olympics? Okay, you know where I'm going with this. The U.S. Olympic team, gosh, U.S. has really been embarrassing the last while. I'm sorry, you guys. So the U.S. Olympic team showed up with hard landing clothes on, the men's team, and they had these giant hickeys all over their body, perfectly circled. And the media said, what the heck is that? What is that? So they found out it was called cupping, and what did they do? They went and they found a bunch of cupping practitioners, and I woke up one morning in August, and my Facebook feed was full of articles from the most notable American um, uh, media with these people on there, with these hickey, hickey things on them, and they were just going on and on about, I guess this works because they're amazing and they're winning all these gold medals and how amazing it must be. It's, it was awful. 
It was really a really a hard time. So what I did is I said, first thing I thought of was, oh my gosh, what are people reading? Because they're going to go and try to find out what cupping therapy is also. So they did. I went over to the Wikipedia page and this is called a lead right here. This is the lead. That's the thing that most people read. And that's all they read. Most people only read the lead. And what it said, if you condensed it down to just like two sentences, was cupping is old and it works. That's pretty much what the Wikipedia page said. And I was like, oh my gosh, we can't have this. It's all over the news. The media didn't, you know, bless the media. They're, they're, they have very little time on their hands. They're trying to do something 24-7 media coverage. Can you imagine trying to always have something on the news and you're competing against these people? You have to constantly be creating content. So you're quickly trying to create content because, you know, you're underpaid, you have less staff, you're trying to do several jobs, you're writing a Twitter feed, a Facebook feed, and trying to write articles and research. They're getting their information from Wikipedia. I guarantee it. When it's something odd like that. So they, so is a mess. So I, my team and the rest of the Wikipedia community, and I do want to make a, take a moment and just mention that the majority of skeptic, uh, Wikipedia editors are skeptics, even if they don't identify as being skeptics, because you have to rule, follow the rules of Wikipedia and the rules of science to put a, edit, a pay, to put something on Wikipedia. You have to follow the rules, and those rules are skeptic rules. That's just the way it is. If we did not have the majority of the people who are doing the editing, it, Wikipedia would turn into something like Conservapedia. It would be nonsense. There's a lot of people out there, thousands of people who are doing a lot of work, and they're not necessarily on my team. I just have a very small fraction of them that's focused on this topic. So we managed to change the cupping therapy page. Now, if you were to read the lead, it says, cupping is old, it does not work, and it could harm you. So basically, that's what it says right now. So let's look at stats again. Here's what was going on. Oops, wrong way. I, I don't really have fun with this. Okay, so this is the cupping therapy page. So it was probably getting about um, 1,500 page views a day up until that point. And then on one day, English only, 106,000 page views in one day. That's how crazy it is, and that is how important Wikipedia is. So during this week or so that the, these stats are high, you can see this is about 500,000 page views only in English, and every language had the same spike. Not to the extent of 100,000 page views, but every single language everywhere we checked that had a cupping therapy page had a same spike on the same time. So hopefully they got some great information. One of the things that we were able to do is we were able to go and find notable critics who writing about a topic like medical doctors who are in our community who've already written really good critical articles on cupping. And we took those articles, there's about nine of them I found, and we put them on the cupping therapy page. Not only to, to give more information to the person reading the Wikipedia page about cupping therapy, but what we were hoping is that when the media was trying to figure out who to contact about cupping therapy, they didn't call the cupping therapy person down at the end of the street. They would look into some of these people we put on the Wikipedia pages. We do this, and oh, those people that we put on Wikipedia pages have wonderful Wikipedia pages, and I know that because we created them and make sure they stay in good shape. So there's a lot of different people. Here's four, four, different, four different people. And you can't read it. It's Harriet Hall, Mark Crispit, Simon Singh, and Edward Ernst. Just four different people that um, have written about cupping therapy. And you can see that they also got a spike on the same day as everybody else. Because what people were doing was going from the Wikipedia page to their personal page. And they were mentioned like in the article somewhere, and they still are on the Wikipedia page. Again, this isn't thousands of page views. This is hundreds of page views. But it's still, it's, we put information for the media to find and for the public to find about these page views so that they have some good information. Okay, last thing. Has anybody heard of this man? 
His name is Stanley Plotkin. Do I see a hand back there? No. Stanley Plotkin. Okay. So this is another page we just did. And I have thousands, and not thousands. I have at least hundreds of stories I could tell. But this one kind of struck home a little bit more. We, as a community and a society, in my opinion, we don't recognize the people we really should be recognizing. We're focused on soccer players, porn stars, um, actors and actresses. Yeah, they do a good job, but they don't save lives. And this man has been saving lives for thousands of lives. This is a man who was on the teams creating vaccines that really affect us, the MMR vaccine, the uh, rubella, rabies, pneumonia, um, let me see what else he's been on. Uh, rotavirus, which is a diarrhea that uh, kills lots of children in lots of third world countries. So this man is a scientist who has created all these, helped to create a lot of vaccines. This is the Wikipedia page as it looks right now, because one of my editors decided he was going to take on this project and he decided to rewrite the page, which is what we train people to do. This is the page views. I'm not page views, the uh, citation. So he's at 23 citations right now. That's really good. This is a very good Wikipedia page. If you read it, you will find out what a lovely person this man is and how he's just a guy, you know, and how he wanted to be a pilot and he decided to go into science instead. I think because he had an inspirational teacher that pushed him into science. And then when he was in his 70s, he went back and got his pilot's license. <laughs> and I think that's really kind of fun. So this was a Wikipedia page up until August. Five citations. This is a call, I call it a non-scroller because you don't have to scroll to see the entire page. That is it. Five citations. Pretty crappy, pretty embarrassing. This is our person. This person represents all that we are the science lovers that we are, this, the people who love pseudoscience and, and want to fight it. We have to own this, you guys. Nobody else can do this. They can't, he can't do it, his school's not gonna do it. Nobody's doing this where they're trying to, we wanna respect our people. How can we expect the world to respect our scientists, our people who represent us, if we ourselves don't respect those people? How can we allow this to happen? And there's thousands of pages like this. I just was looking at Spanish Wikipedia pages last night for your scientists, your astrophysicists, your astronomers. I have to say, it's horrible. It's beyond horrible. In fact, not only are there very few pages written, but the ones I'm seeing are, this makes this look good. They're like four or five sentences. It's really bad out there, folks. Okay, now to add, a little more sadness to this. So we wrote to Stanley, and I said, hey, we rewrote your Wikipedia page. Just wanted you to know. And he wrote me back. Here's what he said. I'm flattered that you undertook this, especially as I approach the end of my career and ask myself whether or not I have accomplished anything. Just let that soak in for a moment. This guy has felt ignored. He felt like he's done nothing with his life. The man who saved thousands of lives and will continue to save thousands of lives all over the world with no appreciation whatsoever. We have allowed his page. And like I said, there's thousands of others out there who are doing the work. There are people who are blogging in some countries that are being beaten. They're being cut to, pit, beat, cut to parts. Their families are being beaten and killed for writing about atheism or humanism, can you imagine that? They're on the front lines. There are other people who are fighting against the anti-vax movement and they're being doxxed and they're being, they're, the, the people are going after them trying to get them fired from their jobs and they feel alone and they feel like nobody cares, right? So it's really sad. We, we fixed this one page, but that's just the one. So. We have evidence on our side. We know, we understand, we know how cold reading works, we know how vaccines work, we have all this, we know this. But we gotta get this information out there in places where people will read it, understand it, 
and be able to move on and make great decisions about what they're doing with their lives and, and go back to the cat videos or whatever it is they're doing. We need to, in my opinion, we need to stop fighting with people on Twitter and Facebook because they're not reading your stuff. We need to do something. You're not going to get applauded for writing a Wikipedia page. Nobody's going to come to you and say, hey, I just read Wikipedia and now I've changed my mind. But you are making changes and you are really affecting people in ways that you will never know. Thousands of people. So I want to end on a good note. Okay, doing this training that we offer, it's self-paced, online, we use a Google document with videos and training we have set up. You get a personal trainer who will hold your hand virtually, you know, um, over Facebook. Um, it's usually me because I like doing the training, I really enjoy training. Um, and um, you're put into the secret cabal immediately and you're able to meet all your peers and, and, and uh, start working. Once you're finished training, which can take months or weeks, as long as it takes you, you need to be able, that's what will happen. So let me look at this last little thing so I can give you one thing to go home on with a very good note. Hold on. Because we keep track of the Wikipedia pages that we write. We make thousands of, I mean, we, we make edits all the time that have nothing, you know, that are just a paragraph long or four or five sentences long. But we keep track of everything we write. I should have had this handy. Sorry, guys. Um, we have. We make sure. Here it is. We make sure. Um, we keep track of every Wikipedia page we've written or actively rewritten. And as I said, we're just hit 500 in many languages. I only have eight done in Spanish. Just saying. <laughs> um, and uh, the one that we have the most views of in, on Spanish. It's chupacabras. You guys know what that is? So the chupacabra page was translated into Spanish. One of my very good friends, Ben Radford, wrote the, a book on chupacabras and, and solved the mystery of chupacabras. So the page, we wrote this in 2016. The chupacabra page, you know, I mean, how often does that come up in conversation with you guys? In one week, it received 3,711 page views. Who's thinking about chupacabras? <laughs> but since we wrote this page a year and a half ago, it's already received 275,000 page views. So somebody out there is interested in chupacabras, okay? So when people try to tell you, people aren't interested in Bigfoot, people aren't interested in that, that's just nonsense. Everybody knows UFOs. And Trust me, they are interested, they are reading it, they're very interested. The page that we get the most page views from in past is a page that um, scared me as a child, spontaneous human combustion. I don't know if you know what that is. But it terrified me as a child. We've already had a one million something page views of the page we rewrote. So, as I said, we keep track of all our page views and um, those 500 pages that we have rewritten. Okay, so here's a number I'm gonna give you. This is where we are. This is why I had to write it on paper because every day it changes. My GSOW project in many languages from 500 pages that we've written has already received 16,620,191 page views. That's changing a lot of minds. That's affecting a lot of people. So I'm done and um, I'm happy to answer all the questions you have. And if you want me to stay a little later, I'm happy to answer all the questions you possibly have. Thank you for letting me talk. Yes, as, as we already do, we will allow you to make questions. It, they can be in Spanish. Podéis hacer preguntas en castellano y trataremos de, de traducirlas. Hey, Susan, I have been asking you. ¿La hago en castellano por.? The video interview is in English, so feel free. Vale, lo hacer en castellano para que así todos sepan un poco de lo que estoy hablando también por si alguien. I use the video if you answer me in Spanish. Eh, like, you need a tip, so I need Spanish speakers. Okay. Whatever is fine. With you. Eh, bueno, eh, aquí en España se suele decir que hablar con los muertos es fácil. Lo difícil es que te respondan. Vale. <laughs> aparte de eso, okay, eh, <laughs> aparte de eso, ah, ¿Hay algún problema con, de abogados, de juicios o lo que sea si cambias la biografía de alguien y ese alguien, por ejemplo, el señor Kanchiski, este, eh, se enfada? O sea, ¿habéis tenido repercusiones legales? 
they translate that yes. for the audience. Have you been to it? Have you been suffered suffered uh, problems uh, after changing the biography of someone from their legal department or that legal? Uh, or something like this. Well, Wikipedia has very strong rules, and you can't go after a Wikipedia editor. In fact, if you try to go after a Wikipedia editor, the media will come down on you, and the Wikipedia world. And you've heard of anonymous and sites like that. Where have you heard of the Streisand effect? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the Streisand effect is Barbara Streisand. She wanted somebody took a picture of her house on a coastline of California, and she wanted the wanted it removed <laughs> from wherever it was in a book or something. What happened when she protested and said she wanted it taken off out of this book is the world went nuts, the internet community, and just took the picture and put it everywhere. We don't like censorship. We're just in a society right now that censorship is not okay. So you can't go after a Wikipedia editor. You will just be shamed. In fact, they will share the story farther than it went if you had just tried to just barely touch it. So you can't really sue me or anybody like that because I'm only putting up citations that exist in the media. I'm not creating the citations except for Tyler Henry. But if Tyler Henry and his people came after me, that would be amazing. I would love that. Because he'd have to prove he can talk to the dead. And what better thing would we like to see than that? I'd like to see him talk to the dead. Boy, that would be, that'd be something. Yes. <laughs> okay. just, just, no, just for clarification, there is a hierarchy of editing within Wikipedia. There is the entry level and then there are senior editors and nobody can edit everything. Can you make a short scheme here? Mm -hmm. If, uh, say, a second year medical student wants to join, who's going to look after him? Well, it'd probably be me, but because... But uh, who's looking after you? I mean, it's within, it's us. I mean, there is a hierarchy in Wikipedia. Not really, no. Sort of. Well, okay, so you have to have a strong edit history. You have to show that you are here to create a better Wikipedia. And that's how I train you. I train you starting off with the very, very basics, adding a photograph, adding a single citation, correcting a spelling, just little tiny things. And you build up and build up and build up and build up until you're really working on some major stuff. And you become an amazing Wikipedia editor when you're done with our training. So there is no real, no real seniority. Kind of in a way. Related to the reputation of the editor, mostly, no? Yeah, well, so it's more of a confidence thing. If you have just barely joined Wikipedia and you don't have much of an editing history, then you kind of need to, you know, if admin, and there's some admins, there's not a lot of admins. If some admin tells you something, um, like you didn't do that right or whatever, well, you should look and see what you did wrong. Because I'm an editing group and we're operating on Facebook in a secret group, people, if somebody would go after one of your edits and say, no, you did that wrong, we would probably say, you probably did do it wrong. <laughs> and here's how you do it right, and here we're going to fix it. And here's how you fix it. So there's not, when you say, who is it who's doing this? Who's approving that? There is no, it's they. They is us. It's just people like you guys. It's, it's really, there's no, there's nobody approving these things. Wikipedia is editable by anybody. Well, there are lobbies. Sorry, lobbies. Lobbyists? Lobbyists. It won't go there. are lobbies. When you touch so certain touchy feelings of touchy subjects, so many comes around. Many, many doctors, they have been killed when they were about to do something proper for the powers. Probably 45. Okay, I don't know anything about doctors being killed. All I know is that um, there is no conspiracy on Wikipedia. I've been asked. No, Wikipedia. no, no. Okay, yeah, in real life, yes. But in Wikipedia, I've been told that there is a conspiracy. Every language I have approached, I was telling this to Luis, every group I have talked to that has a, you know, that is not an English language, they all tell me it's different on our Wikipedia in Spanish, in Greek, in, in Hungarian, in Bulgarian, whatever. We can't do it because of the conspiracy of these people who do not want good science. They do not want this. They do not want that. I assure you, I've never found a single case of it. Every time I've looked into an edit, it's because the person who made the edit was incorrect. They did it incorrectly, and they just didn't know what they were doing. 
But they say, but then when their edit is removed, they blame the conspiracy. They, there is no they. It's us. A variation. How many assholes? How many assholes? There's there there are people who are Wikipedia editors who are uh, have been doing it for years and years, and they've seen so much abuse, so much trolling that they can be very short with people, and they say wrong, move away. And those people are discouraging other people from learning how to edit Wikipedia because they're just being very, very short with people instead of stopping and saying, you did this incorrectly, let me show you how to do it correctly. Or, you, you know, let me, let me help you with that. Instead of doing that, they're just going wrong, you know, and so people are discouraged. So the people are assholes. I'm sure there's lots of Wikipedia editors who are assholes. They're usually the people that have been around a long time who are just impatient and just tired of seeing trolls and, and stuff on Wikipedia. Yes, uh, well, we suffered a lot of uh, problems in the past with the Spanish Wikipedia, and uh, some years ago there was a lot of controversy around that. Uh, mm -hmm. You, could, you, you only need to compare the, the English version of some articles and the Spanish version of some articles, and it was totally embarrassing. But uh, as Susan said, it was probably because the job was, wasn't done properly, and that's the important part of the training that she's offering. Right. Because the, the changes, all the changes, needs to be, let's say, uh, backed from reliable sources and these kind of things. So Right, we train all that. Do you get uh, feedback from uh, ordinary people who read uh, an article before and after you change it? From the, what we try to do is when we rewrite a biography, we usually try to contact the person right before we make it live, after we're completely done with it, just so they can look their eye over it and see if we've made any serious errors or years or something like that. For instance, about copying. Like well, copy. No, but I do have a story really quick. I can probably do this really quick. You guys, I don't know if you have a large Mormon community here, Mormonism. Okay, so it's a, it's a thing in America. So um, there's a story of this guy who was um, really active in the Mormon church. He was a missionary. He was extremely active in the Mormon church. And uh, he wanted to understand what the criticism was of his church that he loved and he's been raised in, he'd been a missionary. So he went to Wikipedia, oh, he was listening to a podcast and somebody mentioned polygamy. That's marrying more than one person at a time. So he said, polygamy, what the heck? And so he went to the Wikipedia page and he found in depth about polygamy. And not only polygamy, the Brigham Young was married to a 14 year old and oh, he was shocked at what he found on Wikipedia. And he went to the sources and he found that Oh my gosh, this is real. And what that one person did is he wrote a manifest using citations from just the Mormon church, and he was, and it's one of the most famous criticisms of Mormonism out there, and it has converted tons of people to leave the Mormon church. And it is because this one man heard this word polygamy on a podcast and he went to the Wikipedia page, and it still exists. You can look on the Wikipedia page for the Mormonism and you will see that that it, it's just factual that he was married to many women and some of them were married to men at other times and some were very young. Why is the Wikipedia page on GMOs, transgenicos in Spanish, so weak, so light, so equidistant from the debate? You know, some people say, some people say, you, you are not hard enough on anti-transgenics or anti-GMOs. Uh, let me say, let me tell you why I'm saying this and why I'm so upset. Okay, I work for an ONG uh, who works in development in Asia and Africa, and I visited many countries where there are already solutions, GMOs, which would uh, prevent thousands and millions of people from malnutrition and dying. And when I read Wikipedia on those things, you are not hard enough. You say, you know, there are debates, people say it's dangerous, this, uh, agent, this uh, scientific institution say, says it's not, you know, but you are a little bit equidistant. I know, we're working on chupacabras. That's pretty, probably pretty frustrating to hear we're working on a chupacabra page and not a GMO page which saves lives. Huh? I totally get you. Um, the reason why, 
Well, there could be many reasons why. First is, I have very few Wikipedia editors in Spanish, and they need some sort of expertise of some sort to handle some of the more technical pages like GMOs. Um, we, uh, in, we have a man in America, his name is Kevin Folta, who is uh, an expert on, on GMOs, and he calls them genetical, genetic engineering. He doesn't like genetically modified, he uses genetically engineering. Um, he says, you wouldn't go over a bridge that was modified, you'd go over a bridge that's correctly mo um, engineered. So that's his take. But he's been attacked on Wikipedia, and we've been doing our best to make sure that his Wikipedia page is in great shape. So I have not, and my team has not been active on GMOs. We haven't touched that page. That's pretty much, I haven't read the page, but I would assume, looking at it, that just like Mormonism, Scientology, evolution, homeopathy, the page has to be written as neutrally as you possibly can and still try to sneak in the, the, the evidence. Well, not sneak it in so much. I'd have to look at the page in more detail and I don't have the expertise. I'm a baby photographer. I don't know anything about that <laughs> kind of stuff. But yes, I feel very passionately about GMOs as well. And these are one of these things, climate change. Um, there's just so much work to be done. You can't believe for everything that, um, you know, some people would say we should be working on GMOs. The other person says, no, we got a cancer quack over here who's doing this. And somebody else is going, no, they're trying to cure cancer with vitamin C. That's more important. And then this is important. And oh, that's important. It's just, it goes to the passion of the editor works on the pages. So I need editors who feel passionate about it. I will completely train you on how to do it and we can, we can change it. This, and as Susan explained us before, it's not only about translating other better pages yeah. in other languages, it's also uh, researching for reliable sources and even uh, providing these reliable sources from relevant people in our community. We know, we know right. Are the citations written by notable Spanish speaking people? They have to, I don't want them to go to a Wikipedia page, read it in Spanish, and then go to the citations and they're written in English. I mean, what good is that? So those citations have to be written in Spanish, and they have to be written by notable people, and people are notable when they have a Wikipedia page. So first you create the biography pages, once those are created and maintain in good shape, and they're writing good information, and it's printed in, or released in Spanish, then we can use those citations. So what's happening is it's a cycle. It's, it's not one thing, we have to do everything. So it's the biography pages and everything else. And then we need to find the editors, too, and get them trained. Okay, so let's go to the next steps. How can we get going? Oh, all right. Yeah. How, how can yeah. we be a fan? We, we're a, you don't see many people here, but we're a, a very large group. Okay. We do many things in, in many media, and uh, I think that's a good opportunity to start. Okay, so how do you going start? Going ahead. So right. So think about what's it. next. What's next? Okay. So what? It's very simple. You just have to have a willingness to want to do this. You have to be on Facebook. We've tried managing this project in other ways, and it does not work. Facebook is the only place we found any success whatsoever. So you have to be on Facebook, even if you just join Facebook just and you're only on the secret cabal and it's the only place you exist. And you don't want to have anything else to do with Facebook. You sorry. You can become a Wikipedia editor. You just and not be on Facebook and not be a part. It's really simple. You send me a friend request. I accept your friend request. You send me a private message on Facebook. We use Facebook a lot. And you just say, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to join. You convinced me. I need, you, I need your email. I need your Wikipedia editor name. So you'd have to go to Wikipedia and, and open an account. And you say, I'm ready. And I will send you a Google document with everything you have to do. Every step you have to do, you do it on your own time. Um, probably I would be your trainer. You would, and I would just communicate with you through, through Facebook, just on private messages. And then I will immediately put you into the secret cabal with the 105 other people. And you'll meet them. And then you'll just start on your training. It's videos and assignments and reading and it's a lot of stuff because we're training we're training you to be a wikipedia editor in a way that you're going to be more well-rounded to understand the project it's, it's work so it's not like something you're going to pick up in a couple days i mean you will start editing in a couple days but it's 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 a lot but yeah um yeah please please join us we, we need people badly but the other things that can be done is 
again, we need to have content created. We need things site if you if you know of a GMO um, article that you think sums it up amazingly and it's in the it's it's really well done and this is the good one to convince, maybe you should but it's not available in Spanish, maybe you should approach the people who publish it and say, we need this in Spanish. And that would be a really good help too. Just get these things written into languages so that we can put it and use them as citations. So there's a lot of avenues you can do that don't mean you have to be a part of the project. Did I answer your other question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, some small natural things. You know that now the knowledge, medically, scientifically, have been concentrated, have been concentrated in very few places, more and more. And most of the people is hanging off the clip. In South America, Africa, or wherever, even in Spain, you know, more and more in Harvard here than from Monsanto, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the point how can we get access to that? And the second thing is, even in Spanish, is a very, very well language, the second after equal English, Chinese, and Spanish, how they somehow put it lower in the round because of our skilled politician, because of something called New World Order. So it's hard for us, you know, to really not only that we cannot produce those skills because we have been many, many Spanish people, Latin American people are working in the United States or in Germany, but they produce in that language. And there's also a third thing called rights. All the books and etc. they have rights. So really to get that information into your documents or really to show them that probably that requires a really, really Money or really, really devastating. I don't know. Yeah, I just foresee three things there. Sure, would like to have some Chinese editors. That would be great. <laughs> so you were asking me the. Are you saying the rights of the of the publication? Yeah. Okay. So as I said. More people are more than willing to probably produce something in another language if they can, if 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 they know that there's a need for it. So I think if we we because if you translate it, it's not like if you take a really great article and you just have it translated, that's not enough. We can't use the translation as a citation because the translation could be uh, wrong. It could be it has to be vetted, so it has to be republished in some source. So I think pressuring people to get um, content translated into other languages would be a really great start. I'm not sure I answered your question completely, though. Sort of. Sort of. Okay, great. So we can talk after if you need to. So somebody else, I'm sure. Nobody back in the back has a question. You can just shout it out. You're sitting back there all attentive. Come on, I see you back there. Come on. What do you want to know? Oh, even in Spanish. Yeah, tell me in Spanish. Susan, uh, uh, can... Hablo español, pero más o menos. Hi. Uh, do Wikipedia have any kind of funnel to see the study, uh, study uh, the flow, the users uh, follow uh, one article, then another, and then another, to see um, what's their, what are they looking for and what they expect from Wikipedia? Okay, so we don't have any way of doing that except in very weird conditions like I did with the Tyler Henry Psychic page where we can see that they went from one to another. We can also um, put it this way, nobody is using Wikipedia from my understanding the way my project is. So we're the only one that's really kind of, that I've ever heard of, that's actually looking at it in a way of activism. Most people are just creating good Wikipedia pages because it's a good thing to do is to create good Wikipedia pages, but they don't have, I guess, my agenda of trying to educate people and trying to change minds. So, um, no, I don't think there's been any kind of study or any kind of research that looks to see if people follow from uh, page to page to page. I think that's just something that I do. Um, you can, we're always fascinated when we'll look at a Wikipedia page and we'll see a huge spike in their views and we think, what caused that? What if, um, my Hungarian pages, we rewrote the Wikipedia page for measles, for the actual measles. And I showed it to the Hungarian who had translated it, or wrote it the other day. And I, I said, what the heck? There's like a thousand, several thousands of uh, page views in one day, just giant spike. 
So he was, I don't know what caused that, but he went back and did some research and he found out that that was a day that there was a measles outbreak in Hungary. And then all of a sudden, shoom, these page views went like crazy. So it means people were accessing it, but we don't really have any way of doing that. I love statistics myself, but I would like to know that, but I, I don't know. Nobody in the back? Oh, okay. she has one. <laughs> These chords are funny. In Spanish, gracias, Susan, por estar aquí. In English, um, uh, de nada. One, uh, okay. uh, one observation and a question. Um, uh, observation is uh, you have said, I think, uh, people are not stupid, uh, people have ill information. I think it's true, it, it happens, but uh, it's also true and also happens uh, that there are uh, not few people who uh, don't want, uh, don't want, uh, don't, don't need to have knowledge, to, uh, don't, don't want to, to, to know, really. They, they are afraid of knowledge. Uh, they prefer to live a um, the on my comfortable life. Um, and this is true also. It happens, I think. Mm -hmm. So human beings need uh, to believe, need to, to stay comfortable home, if possible. And uh, to be a skeptic, a skeptic is, a, is a, a little bit uh, uncomfortable. Right. Mm -hmm. so, I'm no fun at parties either. Yeah, observation. <laughs> and the question is, uh, how and why did you decide the name Guerrilla <laughs> Skeptics? Skeptics, and if uh, this name, this name, um, does this name help you to to achieve uh, your uh, your goals? To to have more people uh, nearby Skeptics uh, com community? That's a good question. So how did I get the name Gorilla Skeptics? And yes, I do believe, as you said, that people, I don't be, think people are stupid. I think they're ill-informed. Or And a lot of people don't want to get the information. They, they're happy in their lives doing the things they do. But if they want to find it, I think that if you approach them the right way, I think that most people want some information. They, they, they really would like to know. People who don't vaccinate their children, I don't think of them necessarily as stupid or bad parents. They just, they really want the best for their child. They're just ill-informed. They have had bad information for whatever reason. But going back to the gorilla skepticism, I wasn't supposed to be speaking in Madrid. I wasn't spo supposed to be on tour. I'm, I'm just not supposed to be doing any of this kind of stuff. I don't have any expertise in technology. I have, you know, I, I for 34 years, took pictures of people's babies. So, I mean, for me doing this is crazy. Um, back in 2009, I met a man called Mark Edward, and um, we became partners for a long time. And uh, he's an expert on psychics. What? So psychics, yeah. So we hit it off really well. And we're still we're still together. And he was on the beginning of this tour. But Mark is an activist. He's more of a in-your-face kind of activist. Let's like the 1960s, get in the streets, man, protest. I'm more of a let me write about that and protest, you know. I'm more of a stay-at-home kind of person and not, like, attack people face-to-face -face so much. So Mark was really saying we needed to get in the streets and do something about psychics. So his tactic was guerrilla warfare, kind of behind-the-scenes stuff. So he came up with the name, and every time we tried to do something, he would always say, we're, we're going to do guerrilla this, guerrilla skepticism. So when that just became the name. Well, see, as I said, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm, this wasn't supposed to be a thing. It was supposed to be just me editing Wikipedia and just have maybe a couple of time with it. And then people started asking me to talk and then it just grew and grew and grew. And I had to come up with a name really quickly. So I went with Gorilla Skepticism because that's what we were calling everything at the time. So Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia. It has not necessarily helped. The paranormal community is absolutely uh, I, I'm going to use the word frightened of the term. They have used it as a pejorative against us, those guerrilla skeptics. They ruin everything. 
and that's fine. Mm -hmm. I've been embracing it. I've been attacked by many, many, many people in the paranormal community. Deepak Chopra and all his friends cannot stand us. They say, those grilled skeptics, they're ruining everything, just like (laughs) Scooby-Doo, those kids. So we've just kind of embraced it. And that's why we go with the funny, we're more cartoony and more fun because it seems like it would be a very scary thing. But I assure you, we abide by all the rules of Wikipedia, even though we have a kind of a militaristic sound to it. So I don't know if it's helped. I, I'm speaking in a Madrid. God, nobody else is uh, coming from America and speaking here that I know of. Well, I'm James, Randy, and Shermer and them guys. But, you know, they, you know. But you're among the third or the fourth. Yeah, the third or the fourth. Yeah, so, so I guess it's helped because the name is kind of catched on and people are like, what the heck? I mean, you guys all came out and said, I got to go see what this is about. This is weird. So maybe it's a good marketing thing. I don't know. Uh, just a little question about the side issue, I, I, it's just curiosity. I thought you could not edit your own Wikipedia page, but I, I think I, I understand that you did with yours. No, I haven't edited my own. Um, a photo has to be uploaded by the person who owns the photo. Right. So I have uploaded zillions of photos of myself because I can. And I'm a photographer, so I care very much about photography and photos and visual images. So I can have all the photos I want. You're not supposed to edit your own Wikipedia page. You can write on the top page and say, hey guys, here's a new photo of me. I'd rather have it on here. Would you please put that on the page? And most people will do that. Or if somebody says, you've got this wrong. Um, I didn't graduate from this college. I, I went to this college and here's a citation. Most people do it. But you know, we have an editing team, so yeah, you're not supposed to edit your own page. So people like Stanley Plotkin and stuff, he couldn't have done it. It takes a lot of skill to make sure it's done correctly. And I shouldn't say a lot of skill. It takes some skill and some training to do it, to do it correctly so it stays. For every, uh, is there something like a language group within your, I mean, can I call it your organization or I was, I was in the past? We used to have language groups. He's asking if I have, have language groups. We tried it in the past where it would be a team of people, like the Spanish team, the French team. And what prob- we had problems with it because um, I'm, these are all volunteers. Nobody's paid. And I felt like I was asking too much of each team leader to, to do. And I felt that that wasn't working well. So I got rid of all my teams, and I run everything. Um, what happens now is people will choose to do a page, like maybe a, a page, uh, maybe like uh, maybe you wouldn't go after a GMO page exactly, but maybe you'll, you'll try to write a Wikipedia page or rewrite a Wikipedia page for somebody who's a, who's a uh, supporter of GMOs, maybe somebody like that, that would be easier, a biography. And they'd say, I want to do it in Spanish. It's a Spanish person and I'm going to do the research. You would put on the secret cabal, I'm working on this page and then other Spanish editors might get in. Well, actually, English editors, all the editors will go in and say, hey, I've got a great source for you. We have a lot of librarians on our team. Librarians love this. And so they'll come up with some amazing sources that you can't, you, you never have, would have found normally. So then maybe just a thread on Facebook, somebody will start talking about, um, I'm nearly done with this page, or I'm having trouble finding this in Spanish. And then other people will just join in and say, oh, I got it. My friends at the university of such and such, and I think they can probably get in and they'll, they'll just source it and they'll just find somebody else who find the site and somebody else will find it. And then before it's made live and published live, other people who speak Spanish would review it. And we want to make sure it's written in a way, we don't want experts necessarily, because we want it written for the everyday person. So if we're reading the page and, and somebody looks at it and they say, I have no idea what you're talking about here. This makes no sense to me whatsoever. Then we need to change the way we wrote that paragraph because it's supposed to be written for just everybody to be able to understand. So the team, my Italian team was one person for several years and and, um, she's written 19 pages and um, over 100,000 people have have looked at her pages she's created. I just came from Italy a week ago What day is this? Is it Sunday? Yeah, okay, I was in Italy a week ago. And so I have probably six or seven people who came from that lecture I gave there. So she's been able to do it. 
one person. I have one Polish editor I had. He's created 18 pages already in not even a year, not even six months. And so um, we don't necessarily have teams anymore, if I answer your question correctly, but people just join together on there. And we're kind of like a, just everybody's all on the same team. We just, we want the Spanish people to look over the Spanish citations and, the, and read the grammar to make sure it's written correctly. I mean, I can look at the page and go, it looks beautiful, but I don't know what it says. I can translate it, but it's not going to really, you know, make sense using a Google Translate. I'd rather have a native speaker look at it. And that's like you guys speak in vosotros, right? And then in, and where I'm from, we speak without vosotros. So you know there might be a little back and forth on that. We have a lot of Australians. We have a lot of because I did a tour of Australia a couple of years ago, and then we have English people from England, and we have Americans. We have to be consistent how the page is written, so it's not written in the. You don't want to go from one to another. It's not a problem. We we manage. It's fun. It's fun. It's, all, it's a lot of fun. Okay, as a, as a final question, you are very active and you know a lot of people in the American skeptical movement. All over the world, actually, and not just yes, America. This, these last three weeks, and all over, over the world, and these last three weeks, you've been uh, stalking across all Europe. <laughs> so, can you, to finalize this this gathering, to uh, comment something about the differences or the similarities between the movements? I've spent a lot of time really looking at you guys. I have been following, I've been, I've spoken in so many places and I'd love to talk to you all and what you're doing and what you're not doing and why you're doing it this way and not that way. I found that everybody is passionate. Everybody wants to do something. They don't have any time. Nobody has any time. There's no money in this. Everybody wants to find more time and more money. And, um, You're all really kind of, there's a lot, you all have different things, like in Germany, homeopathy is a big deal. Some places it's climate change, some people it's evolution, and um, we all have a little bit different places. Like in America, homeopathy isn't quite as big a deal as it is in some of the European countries. I think that we need to start working together a lot. We need to communicate. If you guys like podcasts, make sure you check out the ESP, the European Skeptic Con. European Skeptic Podcast. It's it's the only podcast that is European centric. It's in English, but it talks about what every organization is doing, and that's how you can keep abreast. I think that what we're finding is that people want to do more, but nobody wants to organize it because they're too busy. So enter my project, and you can see how that is one of the only solutions out there. Otherwise, everything's just kind of like. Do it on your own, and you're on your own, and nobody's doing anything big. Very few people are doing big things. The Australians have some stuff, the New Zealand a little bit, and um, the British are really big on activism. Nothing's happening in America if you're, unless you're talking about what I'm doing. There's very little activism going on out in the world right now in the skeptic movement. And I know because I've been talking to you guys about it all over. Little bits, little bits here and there. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that you have enjoyed your. Uh, oh this yeah, this has been great. Uh, you have learned a lot this morning. About I get to re practice Spanish my Spanish. Spanish. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, you want to do you want to do Bohemian Rhapsody with me? Yeah. <laughs> you can. Don't let me know the words. Everybody sing along. Are you are you doing karaoke? Is that relevant? Sí, sí. So. Yes.